Hey everyone, Shadow here, and welcome to another Marvel Contest of Champions video. So in this video, we're going to be going through Act 6.4.3. And you can see the team that I've gone in here with. It's pretty much the same team that I've been using throughout this uh, quest here. So we're going to take a look at the path that I consider to be the easiest path for your initial clear. Now, this will change based on your roster, all right? So you have to evaluate it based on the champions you have available, all right? So you've got Enhanced Bleed, True Strike, Aggression, Cruelty, okay? Very, very easy. Many champions can handle this path. Ghost, of course, handles it beautifully. So what you're dealing with, don't want to rely on... Uh, evade, auto evade, but the aggression cruelty means that you want to be somewhat aggressive because if you're too passive, then they're going to build up these cruelty stacks and if you get hit, it's going to hurt a lot and can possibly take you out. Uh, I've had that happen to me before where I was playing around, dancing around, wasn't hitting them, and then Finally, I took a hit, went from full health to unconsciousness. All right, so speaking of unconscious, Blade is down, nice, easy peasy. Okay, so when you're evaluating these paths, you want to look at your roster and see who you have that will do that path well, okay? Now, Something to note about this, you'll notice at the top, you saw Gripped by Fear. Each of these uh, champions that you're facing has some unique node to them. So evaluate the path, look at who you're fighting, like Void here, okay? And then you're gonna want to decide what champion is a great counter for each of these, okay? Sorry if you heard that Windows ding notification from my email, I just closed it out. All right, so I'm running Suicide. So when I saw Void, I was like, oh man, but since I'm gonna be using Ghost, I said, all right, we should be good. All right, and the Grip by Fear, I forget exactly what it does, you can rewind, but it wasn't anything that caused me any kind of uh, concern. And as you saw, Void went down to Ghost pretty easily. All right, next up, we've got Venom Pool. All right, now he's an easy champion to fight, but then you have Bloodletting for him. Nothing to deal with. Uh, now, you may decide to bring in a Bleed Immune champion if you like, but any champion can actually take care of that node. Uh, he's quite easy. Now, I've had a problem, I don't know if you guys have, where when he fires off a special two, I lag slightly. Uh, that happens with everyone that has that particular uh, animation. So that's Venom, uh, not Venom, uh, that's Venom Pool, that's uh, Deadpool as well. Uh, that second animation, second uh, special animation, always uh, lags me just a little bit. And it makes me nervous. Okay, so here I'm trying to bait it out. You see how it's starting to lag? And right there, it lagged just enough that it can throw me off. It didn't do it that time, so it's all good. Now, you see that I went in here with Hood rather than Ghost. No other reason other than I wanted to add a little variety. Uh, Hood, I took to rank five not too long ago, and people were wondering why did I take Hood to rank five? Because I bring him with Ghost. This is my normal questing team. Ghost, The Hood, and Wasp. Those three are always on my questing team, and then I fill the other two depending on who I have available, uh, whether war is going on, if I have some of my champs 
locked in war on attack or defense or both, then I'll just choose two others. Uh, I'll try to choose someone that can handle some of the fights that I may see. So because I always bring the hood, of course, I'm thinking he would be good to take to rank five. Not only that, but there have been situations where I wished that I had him at rank five. I had him at rank four for the longest time, and he did some work in a couple of different situations. And if he had been rank five, the fight would have gone smoother and quicker. All right. So now we're fighting Black Widow. Now, Black Widow is tricky because of that ability accuracy reduction. I have to dash back and be careful and watch. And we got lucky there because she can shut down Ghost's phase so that when I go to do my special two, that is when I'm going to phase and fire my special almost simultaneously. And if she shuts down my phase, then I'm gonna be hitting into her block. And that has happened several times to me in the past. Um, it didn't happen here, uh, and we were able to get her down. But all through the fight, I'm waiting and watching every time I phase, except for that special two, because it happens too quickly. Uh, in that special two, uh, I will just have to hope. But other than that, I'll phase back and wait and be ready to block. All right, so you see here, we've got uh, Enhanced Special One, Fury. Uh, we got some fun. All right, now King Groot, is annoying simply because he takes a lot of killing. He has a large health pool. He gets a regen. When he has those furies up, uh, he will use one of them to shrug off a debuff. So you don't want to parry him while he has the furies up and attack immediately. Uh, what you want to do is parry and eat up those furies. So you just have to be careful. Or you can just wait until they fall off naturally. All right, so I'm going in with Ghost. Nothing too special. See how he did that. Now he's in his regen phase. Now you can parry him, no problem. But with Ghost, she doesn't have a parry heavy style in the first place, okay? Now, something that I'm trying to do with Ghost, uh, if I am not careful and I end up parrying by mistake, I try to do a heavy because I have a chance to build up some furies that way. Otherwise, it's gonna be phase and attack, phase and attack, like you see me doing. Sometimes I'll let him miss a few times, build up my uh, power. That way, every time an opponent misses, she gets some power. Uh, I have her now maxed out. I don't think she was maxed out for this quest, but she's now max sig. So she gets quite a bit of power from misses. All right. So finally, we've got big King Groot down. Next up, we've got Electra, and she is similar to Black Widow and she will shut down your abilities. All right. So here we go. Got no loose ends. Okay. So nothing too terrible here. This is why I consider this path to be pretty straightforward and easy. So I decided to heal up just a little bit uh, to give myself a little bit of a buffer. No other reason. I did not farm potions or anything like that. And it's been a while since I was maxed out on uh, health potions. But it's all good. Uh, Ghost actually doesn't really need, if you play her well, you don't really need any help. You know, you can revive. That little 20% revive is good enough. If you saw my previous, uh, one of my previous videos where I fought Iceman, you'll notice that I did it on one revive. I didn't heal up or anything and was able to take down the boss. So when you play well with Ghost, then that is the case. You don't even take block damage. All right, so I'm doing the same thing here 
as I had to do with Black Widow, but we were able to get her down without too much difficulty. Just a little nervous when you have someone that can shut down your abilities. Same thing with uh, Magneto. Black Widow, Elektra, Magneto, and of course you have those that like to armor break you. Uh, some will armor break you even if they haven't hit you. All right, so you have enhanced bleed. If you're not getting hit, it doesn't matter. In fact, with Ghost, even if I do get hit and I get a bleed on me, I should be able to phase it out, but I will take that bleed damage because what the computer will like to do is they'll put that bleed on you and then they'll start blocking. They'll turtle up. Oh, that thing irritates me. You just don't know how much that irritates me, but they'll do that and you're taking all that bleed damage and you can't phase while you have your precision buff up. You have to hit them. So if they are blocking, you can't do that. The only thing you're going to be able to do is a heavy, and of course, they're waiting for that. And you do a heavy, and they're going to attack you right in the middle of the heavy and, and take you out. Okay, so that's a little annoying, so you have to be careful. Uh, the best way, of course, is just to not get hit. Alright, so uh, with Ghost, you'll see me alternating between doing one-hit combos, two-hit combos. Sometimes I even do a three-hit combo, and there's actually a reason for that. Uh, sometimes it helps mix the AI up a little bit uh, so they don't get used to one particular style. Uh, other times, it helps them be a little bit more aggressive. Sometimes you do like a one-hit combo, they'll start being very passive. But if you do a one-two hit, then you should be all right, and they'll usually attack you after that. All right, so you've got Enhanced Fury. You've got that combo party, all right? Um, but again, none of that makes any difference if you are playing carefully, not getting hit, and Ghost handles that node also quite well. All right, so you see here, I'm doing the little one-hit combos. The other reason to do that with Ghost is in the beginning, because I'm running suicides, I have Double Edge and Liquid Courage. When I start my fights I start phased because she is awakened and what that means is that just look at that that was ugly mistimed all the way he was too far away I was just like wow I don't believe that happened but it is what it is I'm not the best ghost player and I make mistakes um, but the other reason that I do it in the beginning is she's gonna have two furies up watch here all right, see those two Furies? So I want to do one-hit combos because I'm going to get the most damage that way. One hit, one hit, one hit, and then once they're gone, then I can keep alternating and do whatever I want to do. All right, so anytime I die like that, even though that was my own fault, messed up the timing or whatever, I'm usually very irritated and I need to take a break, but when I'm recording, I'm like, okay, I just want to get this thing done as quickly as possible, just get it over with. I have a ton of revives in my overflow. Now's the time to use them. Now, I didn't expect to die on OG Thor, but this guy here, this one is the one that I was worried about. See that no retreat, all right, and the extend, and it's a nihilist. So I am very worried about this particular fight. So with Ghost, it's a little easy because you can do what I'm doing right here. You don't have to change up your style, okay? But you see what he did right there, okay? So what happened there is he started being very passive, all right? And he changed his style up. So while he was being aggressive, that's what Ghost needs in order to do her style. I'm also nervous because he will put an armor break on you even if he doesn't hit you, okay? See how he's backing up there? That is very annoying, okay? So I'm just trying to, you know, alternate. You see I'm hitting him more, more than one time, trying to get that, 
Okay, you can punish his special one very easily. Okay, and you see here, I'm just wanting him to be aggressive. As long as he's fighting aggressively, we're golden. Okay, but that first attempt, he backed up, backed up, wouldn't attack. And then, of course, the no retreat meant that I was going to have a hard time. So now he's got that special two and nothing I could do. He timed it just right so that the phase would end right in the middle of the special two. Okay. If I had tried to bait out a heavy, he would have put armor breaks on me. He's a really nasty defender, especially for Ghost, if he plays a little bit too passively. But I was expecting to use some revives on this guy anyway. This is the fight out of all of them that I was worried about. I just didn't expect to die to OG Thor. All right, so I finished this one off with a special one. But some good counters for him, if you have someone that nullifies, like Symbiote Supreme is a great counter for that particular Annihilus. Um, that no retreat just requires you to play around it, okay? So finally, we are on the final boss, all right? And it's Darkhawk. So here's what you have to deal with here. Um, basically, this Darkhawk is a stacked Darkhawk. These Raptor upgrades, all of that is annoying. Uh, the Hurt Locker uh, can be very annoying, especially if you want to do back-to-back -back specials. Don't do that. Um, power efficiency, you're going to have to bait specials out more, Lionheart, you know, basically, if you know how to fight Darkhawk, you shouldn't have too much of a difficulty. Now, you've got this Null Mode. Null Mode is horrible for him to start in because he's going to do a lot of damage in Null Mode. So, I'm thinking, alright, I'm going to bait this out. Now, I fired off my Special 2, which knocks him down, takes him out of his mode, but he goes into shield mode at this point, okay? And at this point, I really want to try to bait it out, but he caught me, okay? Sometimes when I try to evade, and you could see that all I was doing was trying to evade. He just catches you sometimes. Sometimes uh, the computer is just a little slow in registering your evade, or you are a little slow in evading. So that happened because, of course, I'm, you know, tilted and I'm going in with some other champions just to see, you know, if I can get a little bit of damage done, but really to give myself a little time because I know I'm going to revive Ghost. But I'm thinking here, let's just, you know, go in with a few other champions, you know, while I cool myself down. Okay, so one of the things you want to do, especially with Null Mode, knock him down if you can. Um, and that will help you because it'll take him out of that mode, put him in shield mode, uh, and then, you know, you can go from there. Now, here, Starkey should be a very good counter, but that unblockable, very annoying. All right, you've got to be able to intercept pretty well. Okay. So you see there, I did an intercept and I'm just trying to get to a special so that I can, you know, get him out of that null mode. All right. And he's out now. And now I want to bait the uh, special one. All right. Here we go. And we're doing okay. Was a little slow to punish that. And boom. He caught me there. All right. We went in. Still a little slow. I'm not sure what was going on. All right. Now we got him. Okay. And I was trying. So what I'm trying to do here really is just to get to my special two because I just want to do some damage. You see, he's not throwing his special. All right. Finally, he threw his special when I'm in the corner. I got to it. Boom. Get that special two off. Boom, boom. All right. Now he's got that shock damage on him. And all I was trying to do here was to let that shock damage tick away at him he caught me in the corner it is what it is but i did a lot of damage to him and that was my goal okay and like i said i knew i was going to revive ghost uh 
Starkey is a great counter to Darkhawk, but that unblockable that requiring you to intercept makes this fight pretty difficult. Now you see how he was backing up in the beginning like that? That ticks me off so much. Um, hate when they're passive like that, especially when it's unblockable. So you see there, I was able to intercept him. All right, you've got to be able to intercept in this fight or else you're going to have a bad time. Okay, so other than that, you should be able to take this guy down with a variety of champions. But again, you've got to be able to intercept. All right, so you see here, I'm just trying to do as much damage as I can. All right, that auto block was annoying, but that's Darkhawk. All right, did you see here? He's going down, folks. He's going down. Come on, get him. Boom. And he's down. So not the cleanest of fights. We use some revives, but still no units. So that's going to do it, guys. Thank you all for watching. Hopefully this helped you out in your initial run. Click like, subscribe, leave a comment. Let me know what you thought about this video. And you all have a blessed day.